Welcome back, everyone. The Philippines made a historic first in the medical field this year with a successful adult liver transplant. transplant. Now, here to talk about the pioneering effort are, now it's a pleasure to have you guys really this morning, Dr. Juliet Gopez Cervantes, head of St. Luke's Center for Liver Diseases and director for the Institute of Digestive and Liver Diseases. We also have hip Hepatologist Dr. Ian Kua, Dr. Willie Polido, Head of the Liver Transplant Surgery Department, and Dr. Alan Consejero, Chief of the Liver Transplant Surgery Department and the team's lead surgeon. Good morning to the brilliant minds that we have here uh, in the <laughs> studio. It's really, um, it's really a huge feat and, um, and a wonderful first that you made uh, this year. So please let me extend my congratulations to you doctors. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. Uh, just to get uh, an idea as to how difficult um, this, this accomplishment was before, uh, maybe if we can start off by talking about um, uh, the patient, uh, Dr. Sabornido, beforehand and what kind of, um, you know, what he was really up against. He was suffering from liver cirrhosis, uh, mm. if I'm not mistaken. What is liver cirrhosis? How difficult is it to, um, to find a, a transplant or a donor and then and actually go through the process? Okay, uh, any, any of the doctors, okay. go ahead. Dr. Julia, we'll start with yeah. you. Uh, before I'll answer your question, uh, Ginger, uh, I, we want to correct uh, the thing that we did the first adult liver transplantation uh, survivor. Because uh, initially that is what we thought after we did uh, the successful case. However, last week, uh, uh, we stand corrected because we were informed that there was this 23-year-old uh, patient from NKI who had also a successful liver transplantation nine years ago mm -hmm. and the lead surgeon uh, who did it already left the country many years back. So we, were, we are not the first and we stand corrected with that. But just the same, the mere fact that liver transplantation is a very delicate and very tedious and a really a big uh, program to have one successful case, even mm -hmm. if you're not the first. It's something to be proud of as Filipinos, exactly. considering that all those who did it from the pre-liver transplant evaluation until the patient uh, was discharged and right now up and about for almost five weeks already mm -hmm. uh, is something that uh, and was manned and operated and everybody in the group in the team were all Filipinos mm -hmm. it's something that really we Filipinos not only St. Louis but all the Filipinos should be proud of because we can now compete and we can be proud to say that we can do it if others can do it abroad mm -hmm. so going back to the case uh, we, as tra liver transplant hepatologists, uh, really are faced every time, I'm sure Dr. Koa would agree, with a lot of liver cirrhosis in our country. And this we can, is backed up by our own statistics in our liver data bank. These are individuals, commonly males, who develop scarring of the liver. Mm -hmm. And the most common, we call it cirrhosis. Mm -hmm. And the most common cause among Filipinos is chronic hepatitis B. Okay. That's the reason why a lot of Filipinos who are applying for work abroad are not successful in being accepted because of this chronic hep B, which usually would not give any symptom at all until there will be this complication of scarring from the hepatitis B we call cirrhosis. Not only, of course, hepatitis B, there are other causes of chronic liver disease that can lead to cirrhosis. But for this 51-year-old rural doctor from Misamis Oriental, with the cirrhosis, he developed a complication or two complications. Mm -hmm. One is portal hypertension, which mm -hmm. means that because of the scarring and rigidity of this liver, the blood cannot flow into the circulation going to the liver, that there is this tendency for the blood to find another route. And sometimes the vessels that are being affected are the blood vessels or the veins in the esophagus. Mm -hmm. So he developed this portal hypertension. When uh, when men or, or women, I guess in, in this case, but in this specific case, uh, if a man were to get uh, tested for hepatitis B and find out earlier on that he uh, is, you know, he does have um, this virus, is there a way that it doesn't, it can be prevented or stopped uh, before it gets? Uh, to the to the level or you know to to a to the level of effect of cirrhosis uh, of cirrhosis yeah. so or since um, the Philippines is a hyperedemic area for hepatitis B uh, we recommend um, 
you know, Filipinos to undergo screening for hepatitis B. Mm -hmm. So uh, they need to undergo like, you know, hepatitis profile to determine whether they have the active infection or not. Mm -hmm. If they're negative for, you know, evidence of the hepatitis B infection, they should uh, have the you know, immunization for three doses. So this is the best uh, preventive strategy for hepatitis B. So once they they have hepatitis B, they should undergo a thorough uh, evaluation, whether they have uh, signs of chronic liver disease, whether they have, you know, active infection. So at, at this moment, we don't have any active uh, cure for hepatitis B, mm -hmm. but we do have medications to control the uh, you know, uh, propagation of the virus inside the liver, and thereby, you know, uh, preventing them to develop the complications in the future. And not only uh, is it does it um, raise in, in danger or, uh, or in risk, but it also, you know, uh, raises its costs. I mean, I think that the transplantation would cost over three million pesos. Uh, in, in this case, uh, you know, and so um, uh, just even before we talk about the actual, um, you know, the process that uh, that you doctors underwent, I mean, that's really something that, you know, you kind of want to bite the bullet before or at least help uh, help maintain it at where it is. Well, I mean, going through um, finding about the, the procedure, um, tell us about how long it uh, how long it took with the process of, of finding uh, just so people kind of understand we including myself understand uh, what really uh, what really happened in in that uh, surgery room, uh, Doctor Cosi? The, uh, the whole process itself took about twelve hours. Mm -hmm. okay. In this case, uh, we had a, a deceased donor liver transplant, which mm -hmm. means that the, the the liver came from a brain dead individual mm -hmm. whose family decided to donate his, his organs. Mm -hmm. So we took the liver from Quirino Memorial Hospital and we took it back to to Saint Luke's. And the whole procedure, as I said, took 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So we took the deceased liver from the patient, the whole cirrhotic liver, and as a whole, and then replaced it with a with a new one. So just to re reinforce the idea, it's just like overhauling mm -hmm. the liver. If you try to get the idea of uh, finding a new liver and try to compare it with a car, who, whom we replaced a spare part. That's right, no, doctor. I mean, uh, his family members were were tested to see if they if they could mm, be a living organ, donor, a living donor, mm -hmm. uh, and they did not prove yeah. to be a match. Yes. Which does that now make it, uh, it more even more difficult for you to get uh, the liver of a brain dead person uh, and put it in someone else and and act like it's you know kind of just rebooted. How much more difficult does that make the procedure? I, I, I think the, the most important issue here is because of the fact that uh, most Filipinos are not so open to organ donation. Unlike in other countries where in, if you have branded patients, surely the family will be very much willing mm -hmm, to, to, right. to, to give out the, 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 the organs and save another life. Here in the country, most of the, the, the beliefs, I think, now it's more of the cultural beliefs and, and the, some religious mm -hmm. aspects that we're reluctant to, to, to donate. And hopefully this uh, incident or, or, or this case uh, uh, opens up the, the, the minds of, of most of the Filipinas because we have a lot of, of uh, cadaver donors actually. Mm -hmm. you know? So there are a lot of patients who are dying who can donate not only the kidneys no, but the, the liver as well. So I think this will give us a better chance compared to other countries because other countries they have shortage of, of organs because of that. I was actually going to ask that before. Uh, it, has that number increased, uh, the number of organ, organ donors uh, at all from your uh, experience, from your observation, uh, even though it is you know, under, maybe under par as compared to other countries, but is there a move for people to kind of uh, maybe understand and accept more that life does go on after, yeah. uh, after a, diseased, a deceased person? Uh, uh not only in, in, in our institution, uh, not only in St. Luke's, the, there is a, a drive for, for, for promoting organ donation. Mm -hmm. I think the, the DOH as well as the, mm -hmm. the other transplant centers are advocates of, of organ donation already. Uh, so it's just a matter of, of, of you know, especially with the help of the media, mm -hmm. opening up the, the eyes of people in terms of uh, aspects in terms of saving lives. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about um, what you, uh, what you doctors mm -hmm. did. There's a, a team of 36 doctors, mm -hmm. so we can imagine. Medyo siksikan dun sa loob ng ng surgery. Actually, Ginger, yeah, it was not. Uh, 
well, of course, once uh, we stated it is the team is composed of 36 doctors. Imagine, wow, and dami. And uh, actually, these are multi. The, the team kasi is multidisciplinary in composition. Meaning, you have the surgeons, you have the anesthesiologist, mm -hmm. you have the hepatologist, and then you have the different subspecialties like the pulmonologist mm -hmm. or the specialist in the pul in the pulmonary medicine. So it came to a point that we look like we're big, but yes. the ones who did the evaluation, the core group is made up of us mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. And then the actual transplant surgery itself was composed of six surgeons, six right? Surgeons. Six surgeons. And then we have the four, four anesthesiologists, and then us two as hepatologists. And then we recognize the need for this first case to really be sure that everything will be uh, evaluated and that everything will just simple procedure or simple problem can be addressed so we ask the help of the other subspecialties mm -hmm. to increase the success mm -hmm. not to i mean uh, not to not the make, make light make light of it but i, I watch enough uh, gray's anatomy to <laughs> to yeah. realize or maybe have yeah. to realize you know um, there is that that core that core yeah. team but really you know your support team also yeah. behind that mm -hmm. they're also they also consist of uh, uh, the just as you know, uh, great minds mm -hmm. behind it. But I mm -hmm. think what's really commendable is of that entire team, uh, as well as the the core team. I mean, you donated your services uh, for free. Yes, for this patient, for free. For uh, free. There are situations where really more than anything else in life, what we are after is service. Mm -hmm. At the same time, to be able to help. The Filipinos who are in dire need of mm -hmm. uh, having a liver transplant. Uh, how long? Can, which one? The, how long, doctor? Did we? Uh, were we trying? Were doctors in the country uh, trying to um, really push through with the, the first successful? I know that you you mentioned earlier there was one that happened mm -hmm. nine years ago. But uh, in the in the community, in the medical community, mm -hmm. uh, how much of it was kind of how much uh, of it was really kind of like this this star that uh, doctors were were trying to reach, and how long did that go on for? I think for seven years already, there were already attempts to really come up with successful liver transplant mm -hmm. uh, program and survivors. It's just that the, the program is really a bit difficult to set up. You have to need, you have to have the technology. Mm -hmm. You have to have the expertise. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do re and replace the liver, but the quality and the effect in the uh, track record is the most important thing. And then you have to have the money. Mm -hmm and the support of all the sectors of the society, not only the families, so open to organ donation, so on. So it's really very difficult to come up with one. And the procedure itself, I'm sure Dr. Uh, Consejero and Dr. Polido can attest, anastomosing those small vessels or connecting the 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 liver the new liver with the small vessels is really so tedious if we may uh, have a very uh, very rough overview of how actually difficult the, uh, the transplant the, yeah the, the transplant uh, takes place doctor I know I, I know that you know our, the pictures that we will show mm. won't do it justice yes. uh, at all but uh, what is really involved in in um, in the procedure the the, the procedure involves uh, removing the entire liver the liver the mm. disease liver and then replacing it with a new one mm -hmm. so we have to uh, anastomose or put in place four different structures that is the the veins the arteries and the bile duct and in in some cases we have to use the microscope we have to anastomose a, a, a structure that is a, as small as two millimeters mm -hmm. that is the hepatic artery so that's how difficult it is it has to be made under microscope that's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. you, um, so when you, <laughs> the sounds, uh, when you actually, you know, connect uh, those uh, the small veins Amazing. and, yeah. and mm -hmm. arteries, um, about how many? Is there a rough idea as to how many uh, bio ducts, veins, mm -hmm. arteries, and uh, and uh, capillaries? Because I'm gonna buy. I just remember from science class, capillaries connect the vein. One portal vein, one hepatic artery one uh, hepatic veins and one bile duct as, as a prerequisite. That's the minimum mm. that, that we need to anastomose. The hepatic artery has to be done under microscope. 
that's yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's it's only a matter of connecting. Yeah. Uh, you should have the approximate length so that once the liver sits in on this and uh, connected vessels, oh, there yeah. will be continuous flow so, of blood. So the vessels don't get twisted. Yes. Ah, Otherwise, right. sometimes really you can just connect the vessels, but if it gets twisted, mm. it, it, so it will not work. Some problems, yeah. and it will lead to rejection. Mm. Mm. And so the and so that the the connection. I mean, yes. the, the new connection. You should yes. have the, the enough length. Yeah in order for well, the I'm vessels to be patterned. Well, I, I, I am very much uh, in, intrigued. With